Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, uh, we're talking about uh, Arizona Cardinals, Robert Candice, uh, in terms of his analytics profile, and why it shouldn't be that surprising that he was released from the team. Uh, Robert Candice is one of those types of players that uh, usually when, it, when the film community and the analytics community butt heads, uh, now keep in mind sometimes there is inaccuracies because not everybody in the analytics community is uh, they don't look at all the evidence they look at all the data they kind of draw conclusions on one data point uh, and just kind of go forward from there but as I try to tell people most of the time you need to look at players from a holistic perspective so if there's red flags with a player and then on top of those red flags you there's data that says that you shouldn't draft this guy. That's probably not someone you should draft. <laughs> so, uh, but let's get into it. So if you're new to the channel, new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. Uh, so essentially we're just going to give a general profile on what Robert Candice looked like coming out of college and why he should not have been a first round pick to begin with. And the general sort of question about character uh, and why character is definitely a very important, important component to drafting players uh, and the impact it can have uh, even though the data should be evident about that but getting into the positives first of Robert Kadiche this is probably the biggest thing everybody hung their hat on Robert Kadiche being a great athlete which he was he had a 93.42 explosion score uh, which if you're new to the channel and you want to know about the explosive uh, explosive lower body training score you can go to the description uh, he had a great speed score, 89.15. Um, all those areas are great. When you look at all pro and pro bowl level athletes, he's definitely in that range. Uh, didn't really do any flexibility testing. But if you just look at him from an explosion speed perspective, he was very good. But when you look at his production, he had a 13.87 solo tackle score, a 58.38 sack score and a 42.07 tackle for loss score you might look at those sack and tackle for loss scores and go okay well he wasn't that bad but when you look at all pro threshold and pro bowl threshold uh his solo tackle data was just nowhere near where it needed to be uh you look at the starter threshold he there, there's never been a long-term starter with a uh, a solo tackle score of 25.39 or less and he had a 13.87 so so essentially the cardinals drafted a defensive uh tackle who scored a production score where there's never been a long-term starter in any round with that level of solo tackle data now this isn't to say that you could have a great solo tackle score and be amazing i mean there's definitely some players who had really high solo tackle scores and didn't become anything at the end of a level but when you score that low and you look at the all pro average the pro bowl average the starter average he's nowhere near the starter averages when it comes to any of his production points you start to question this guy and I think the bigger thing to me about Robert Candice because I remember that draft season and I was talking to a lot of different people uh, about him and uh, there was one person in particular uh, Hatman I believe you know Hatman's a guy who does the, the scouting uh, sort of I wouldn't say scouting college but you know he does a sort of thing where he, he takes guys and teaches them to be NFL scouts you know and brings in other people to do that um and he was you know talking about how well robert kadichi has all this potential and all this and that and well you know a team's going to take him the first i'm like i understand he has all this potential you know athletically he's a great athlete but where's the production and you know i'm going to do more videos in the future going over you know production at the interior defensive line position and how draft status affects that as well because you know Robert Kadice was a first round pick so I know a lot of times people are going to go well he's a first round pick so there's a good chance that he's going to be great or at least he's going to be given every opportunity to not fail but in Robert Kadice's case you had numerous off the field issues you had drug problems you had uh I, I don't want to say authority problems but he he's a he's an odd duck is the best way to put it based on many different scouting profiles i mean his his walkout music you know when he actually got drafted in the first round the music he chose to walk out was a song from david bowie <laughs> you know like he's just a little he's a little odd okay and again there's nothing wrong with being a free thinker and thinking outside the box but it never was apparent 
that football was his everything. You know, that football was what he really wanted to do. And I do understand that people bring up character concern. They bring up guys like Randy Moss. Or they bring up guys like Warren Sapp. Or they bring up uh, guys like Chris Carter. Uh, but the difference between guys like Chris Carter and guys like and Warren Sapp. And uh, the list goes on of guys who had really serious character concerns. Corey Dillon. Corey, ooh, Corey Dillon especially. You know, I mean, Corey Dillon didn't get, get in as much trouble. But off the field, he was a mess. The difference between those guys and a guy like Robert Kandice is that all the players I mentioned were insanely productive in college. Randy Moss was insanely productive. Uh, the list goes on. So a lot of times we, we, we say a guy is a character concern uh, and that there's all this upside. He could be the next this, right? He could be the next Randy Moss. He's just like Randy Moss. You know, he's, he's, he's super athletic and he, and, uh, and he has character concerns. That's not how this works, guys. More often than not, the guys that become really productive and really successful, despite their character concerns, are guys that were already productive in college. Tyron Matthews is probably the most recent example of this, a guy that had definitely you know, some marijuana issues when he was in college, and he ended up going on to become a really successful uh, you know, safety at the NFL level. Uh, another guy that a lot of people bring up, Josh Gordon, he's probably the poster child of this example because... Josh Gordon was not that productive in college, and sure, he's insanely talented. He's insanely talented, but if you're off the field is keeping you from playing on the field, then your college play is honestly almost prophetic to what you're going to do at the NFL level. So it's not that Josh Gordon lacks talent, and it's not, if I say a guy isn't productive, I'm not saying that he's not talented. I'm not saying he doesn't have NFL traits. I'm not saying that he's not athletic. I'm not saying that he's not great in terms of just his physical potential. But what I'm saying is, is there is a definite trend that guys that are productive in college end up more often than not being productive at the NFL level if they have all the traits necessary to do that. And in Robert Kandice's case, he didn't have the traits on paper to go on and become a great player at the NFL level. And it's not surprising that the Arizona Cardinals, uh, you know, uh, cut him. So, you know, this is something that, again, I, I, I don't um, I don't want to keep reiter reiterating these types of things. Uh, I don't like proving players to be wrong because, you know, becoming successful is not something that I want to doubt somebody on. I don't want to, I, I don't like doubting players becoming successful. I don't like telling a player that they don't have a chance of becoming an NFL player or a good NFL player or that they're not going to be successful. I don't like saying these things. But at the same time, when you have players like Robert Kandice and you have players like Randy Gregory and you have players like Josh Gordon and you have all these other players where, yeah, they're immensely talented. They have immense physical potential, but nothing on paper says that they were able to take that physical potential and turn it into something good to great. It's just not going to work out for them. It's just not going to work out. So anyways, again, thank you for uh, listening to uh, my little diatribe about Robert Kandice. Uh, if you're interested in more of my work, you can go to uh, my Patreon page um, at Draft. Uh, it's, well, it's in the uh, description, so you can go to there in the description. Uh, and also donate there if you want to support the channel. Um, thank you so much for doing this. I'm going to be getting some more videos out there in the future. Uh, I've been working on getting more NFL data collected so that when the actual NFL season gets here, I'm going to be trying to pump out a lot more videos related to the NFL, um, you know, and that whole sort of um, aspect of things, that dynamic to things. So I know this offseason I haven't been as productive as I wanted to be. I've just been so swamped with work uh, and having to juggle this at the same time. But again, uh, to all my Patreon subscribers that are out there, thank you so much for sticking around. And uh, I'm going to do my best to try to put up more content in the future. So thank you very much. And uh, you have a very nice rest of your week. Peace. Thank you.